Hi, I'm Fox. And I'm Raggable. And this is Two Smart Guys Show. <laughs> How to make a free NAS box part two. Uh, an extended version. Yes. More info, Mike more information about how to set it up. Yes, yeah, so after you've got it built and put together. Yes. No. Uh, last time we covered how to just create a simple SMB share, and now uh, we're going to cover how to use R-Sync in your Mac to uh, basically sync up to the free NAS box. Uh, basically creating a copy of what's on your Mac over to the free NAS. Uh, the reason that I did this is that I found out um, that iPhoto doesn't work very well over the network. Not at all. Not made for it. Doesn't just yeah, doesn't so work. Yeah. So the idea is, um, <laughs> like, you've got your Mac and your wife's got her computer. Yes. And, and you want to be able to put all your photos. Yeah, the, in the same library. Yes. No. Uh, so I photo library over there. I photo library over here. The master one's up on the free NAS box. So uh, Time Machine by Deep. I mean, it's a good backup utility, but you can't really. It's not meant to be shared. <laughs> you can't share a time machine backup. Um, so a better option is rsync. And you can configure rsync to push it up there, and then configure it to pull it down anytime it makes changes. And that way you can keep a copy of an iPhoto library synced across multiple computers. And right now, this is just the push configuration. There is no pull to this yet. This is just pushing it up there. Next time, there will be a pull setup. Ah, so there's going to be part three. Yes. Ah. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, yes. All right, so how do we do this thing? So first thing that you want to do is configure your free NAS box to be an rsync daemon server. So open up your free NAS web UI, click on services, go down to rsync. And it should pop up the server tab where you can click the enable box. And you can leave all the options at default. If you configured another user besides guest, you can go ahead and select that. In my case, I had one called home user. Save and restart. And FreeNAS is now an rsync daemon server. And you, what you need to do next is essentially create a path to share, which is called a module within rsync for whatever wacky reason. So click on modules, click the plus button, give it a name. This is one that you're, you will have to remember this because you'll need to tell the client that name. Friendly description, browse to the path, click, click, click. So this is where your iPhoto library is? Yes. And then uh, for the maximum number of connections, I left it at one to prevent any concurrent pushes. I don't know if that's an issue with rsync or not, but I'm just trying to prevent that issue from arising. I'd have to test and verify that, though. And then after that, you can go ahead and apply changes. And you've now configured FreeNAS to be an rsync daemon server with a module to sync up to. And the next thing that you'd have to do after that is generate an rsync script on the Mac side to actually push up to the FreeNAS server. Yeah, so the FreeNAS box is set. Yes. yes. Now, now you're making the script that'll make it. Um, yes, there is. I mean, rsync comes shipped with, uh, you know, Mac OS X, but uh, writing uh, a command line script for rsync can be a bit arduous for some people. So is there is a tool called rsync X that includes a is script it, generator. Is it just for Mac, or do they also have? No, no, rsync is for Unix environments, Linux environments, FreeBSD environments. There's a version for Windows. So this is not for just Mac heads? No, no, no. So this is the multi-platform <laughs> tool. And there are um, the. Um, there are, we'll have sh links to the recommended Windows programs in the show notes or down there somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, so back to your Mac. You've downloaded rsync X, open it up, and let it run, and by default it'll just open up the simple one-time sync operation window. Um, we don't want that. We want the script generator. So after it loads up, click on the tools menu and there should be an option for our synced, our sync script generator. And we're waiting. There it goes. And you get this lovely GUI for generating an R sync script. And in our instance, we're gonna push up to the free NAS box. And we're going to enable compression, it's your friend, and we'll disable HFS because we're doing it via SMB. 
Now we'll type in the source path, which is, in my instance, the path in my iPhoto library. Don't include the trailing slash. And then type in the module name that we specified earlier in the free NAS box. If you selected another user, type that in. And the URL to the free NAS box. Mine has a nifty little domain name. Leave all the other options to default. We're not gonna bless. We're gonna uncheck as root and we're gonna do it as daemon. Type a name for the script. Test. And then you can go ahead and click generate. And it'll ask you if you're ready. Yes, we're ready. And it will pop up a terminal, a terminal window in just a bit where it's echoing the command it generated to a new text file that we will use to sync. There's our command. And if we go back to terminal, we can see it's been generated. Uh, of note though is that rsync will generate the script with this command or this option for show to go, which is only valid for the rsync distributed with rsync x. Um, it, by default, rsync will tell, you know, to run rsync, which will most likely point to the rsync shipped with your Mac Pro or your MacBook. You can either delete that option out or just tell that script to run rsync's version, which would be at slash users, slash local, slash bin, slash rsync. So here I am just taking out that option because it doesn't work with Apple's rsync. So if you, if you go to our website, twosmartguys.com, in the show notes, we'll have the step-by-step -step instructions so you don't have to memorize this. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's a simple text file. You can open it up in text edit. So now it's been saved. We can go ahead and run it. <clears throat> and you can also enable uh, verbose mode to get a more detailed uh, outlook of what it's doing. Just go back into that uh, text file and add the dash V flag, and that will tell you what file's syncing. <clears throat> rsync also includes this nifty little command at the front called time, which will measure how long the process takes to run. Which is, you know, just useful information sometimes. And from my instance, it took about a minute to go over the file list and make sure everything was up to date. And it'll let you know that in just a second. Anytime, maybe. There it goes. Okay, so my iPhoto library on my FreeNAS box has been updated with the copy from my MacBook. But if you don't want to do this every single time you sit down, you can configure your MacBook to run a cron job that tells that script to run at a specific time or every 30 minutes, every hour, so on and so forth. Very customizable. Yes, yes. Um, you can find out more about the file structure for cron by going to the wiki entry for it. Yes. So, so open up your terminal, terminal type in cron tab dash e, which will edit your user cron tab file. And in here, you can already see I have one. It starts out with the minutes, the hour, the day of the month, then month and then day of the week, and then followed by the command. Uh, when you type it in for the first time, I hit I on the keyboard to enter insert mode, type it in, uh, escape, to escape out of insert mode, and then WQ to write quit, and then you're out of V. <laughs> hey, you've hey, just hey, terminal. <laughs> Come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> WQ, write quit. And then you've just uh, updated your cron dev file, installed it, and it should run at that specific time. Uh, like I said, for more information about how that cron file is structured, go to the wiki entry for, wiki entry for cron. Um, how did your script look? It was running at 9.30 every night. Ah. Minutes, 30, hour, 9, day of the month, month, day of the week. And those asterisks means every day of the week, every day of the month, so on and so forth. Uh, there are some special things like um, for the minutes, Asterix slash 30 for like every 30 minutes. Special things like that. So you can configure it to run you know, anytime you want. So that's the push operation. 
very exciting. Everybody's thrilled over here. It's a party. <laughs> it's, it's late and we're cold. <laughs> Not that bad. So that is one side of making sure that your iPhoto library is synced across multiple computers. It's pushing. The next operation is to configure a poll operation and uh, the cron script or the cron job to run that poll operation and how to balance those two operations among multiple computers. That's for next time. Next time, huh? Yes, next time. <laughs> and maybe how to use it as a time machine backup. Because rsync, as this is not a backup operation, this is just for mirroring your data. rsync will copy it byte for byte. And if there's something messed up with your iPhoto library, it gets copied over. Mm. This is not a backup. So, you, I mean, in addition to having this, you should have your time machine backup or whatever backup method you choose to use. Okay. It was a it was a pretty important note. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> I need I need to build mine now, so I can uh, get all, all up to <laughs> up to date on this. Um, so yeah. So yeah. If you like our, our shows and, and you're trying to build this NAS box, we're going to do a third episode here and maybe a fourth one, maybe a fifth one, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a sixth one. That's what he wants to do with the WD TV over there, Mr. Yeah. Couch Guy. So, and if you if you like this show, we have many more shows at our website, twosmartguys.com, mm -hmm. and we have help from a bunch of other people on people the forums. On the forums, twosmartguys.com/forum, and we have a, a more of a entertaining show called Beyond the Clipping Plane, which is, <laughs> you know, lighting him on it's fire. A oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we lost our clean rating. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's so late. <laughs> so yeah, check that out. Beyond the Clipping Plane. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Walking Crow and Raggable. Oh yeah, and I forgot. Help help us out. We we, we got donated a, a stove so we can keep warm in here. So we're not totally freezing. So we're not totally freezing, but we could use some more help. Um, we have DVDs, ten bucks donation. We'll send you a copy. And also, if you want to make your own T-shirts and. Bumper stickers and cards and things, zazzle.com. Zazzle.com. We can, we can save you some bucks if you use our code, Two Smart Guys. Mm -hmm. On orders of $50 or more, you can save 10%. So it helps us. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next week. Uh, what are we going to cover next week? What are we going to cover next week? Next It'll be week. posted on our website. It's your turn. <laughs> I don't know. Is the secret project from Couch Guy ready yet? We can do it. Yeah. And, and, by the way, Couch Guy is not an intern. He's our mentor. So. Well, then a mentor. <laughs> I have a qualified mentor. He's, he's taught his mentor. Tells him how to color grade properly. <laughs> See you guys next time. Night. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.